The ant is one of the most fascinating creatures in the insect world. Ant Hill is, ironically, a lot like an anthill. It looks very small and simple at first, but beneath the surface lies something far more intriguing and far more cool. It's a bug-based RTS with a focus on drawing paths and earning points. Think Bugs Life if Hopper wasn't eaten by that magnificent bird. And just like Bugs Life, Ant Hill proves that ants are pretty awesome. And would you expect anything less from Image and Form, the fine folks who are averaging an 84 on Metacritic across four Switch releases? They bring this rare ability to shapeshift through vastly different genres while still maintaining incredible quality and fun. Their games all hide a certain level of depth and design behind cute art and cranky, clanky characters. Ant Hill is no different, but it's actually a look back rather than a look ahead, since it initially released on iOS in 2011. This iteration bundles in the DLC and a brand new soundtrack for $10, but yes, it's a mobile game. And that should scare you a little. And if I'm honest, it scared me too. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Big thanks to Thunderful for sponsoring this video. They know I love SteamWorld, so they approached me to give Ant Hill a go. But this isn't a SteamWorld game. There's no Rusty or our Millie here. There's just ants. A lot of them. It's a dramatically different game than Dig or Heist or Quest, and it was actually birthed before SteamWorld big banged into existence. Yet their development shops are still fully on display, and I found myself pretty addicted to maintaining my own aggressive ant farm on Switch. Definitely let me know what you think of the game in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and we've got a couple copies of Ant Hill to give away. So if you want to be entered, all you got to do is leave a comment, leave a like, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the switch force, and we'll pick those winners in a couple of days. Before we go any further though, you must know that Ant Hill is an oddity when it comes to how you play. We've talked shape-shifting and flexibility, but Ant Hill has only one option on Switch handheld and touchscreen only. It's weird, but it's honestly not that big of a deal. Nintendo has removed the switching from Switch Lite, so what the heck? Here's a game that can't switch either. You need the touchscreen to draw paths for your ants. Maybe you'll send some worker ants to grab a beetle carcass over there, send some warrior ants on patrol to protect your trusty workers, send some spitters out to do a little long range duty, send some bombers out to chip away at a really big bug. There are only four different units in this game from what I can tell, but their roles are so defined and so important that I don't really wish for more units. Workers are critical to collecting food, be it mini buggies or recovering dead enemies. Yes, you convert your fallen adversaries into food, which is vicious. And it's this food that becomes your only resource to spawn in new units, like warriors. Warriors are the ones who help that process along, existing as the melee force that will defeat most of the incoming swarm. And then spitters and bombers do damage at range and from above. These can be upgraded to have more health, deal more damage, drop burning goo, slow down enemies, you get the drift. I love my little ant buddies. There's something cute and clever about managing an army of bugs. No, I haven't named them yet, but I do hate to see them defeated. The core gameplay here is drawing paths, giving you direct control over where your little army walks and works. It sounds simple, and it is, but you need to be very attentive, constantly drawing new paths, replacing old paths, and rebalancing your unit allotments. And by creating all of these paths, you're evolving the map as each level progresses, because where you kill quickly becomes where you mine, where you feed quickly becomes where you need to protect. There aren't any bases or buildings in Ant Hill, but you're in effect setting up stations across the map based on where you choose to engage in combat and that makes patience and pathing even more important. It starts to feel like a hybrid between tower defense and RTS, and this is so much fun because you're responsible for every element of your little ant army's success, and drawing them around is a great tactile way to interact, almost making you feel like the ant commander. I love sending my workers out to retrieve a big bug that I just took down, and then quickly canceling their path once a new swarm arrived. Then come the warriors and the spitters to unleash all sorts of bites and goo on those pesky ladybugs. Yeah, ladybugs are really dangerous in Ant Hill. The Switch touchscreen works surprisingly well, and I only say surprisingly because I never use the Switch touchscreen. It's always there, it's been a feature from the start, but outside of an occasional menu press, it's not something most games utilize. But it's precise here, and thank goodness, because these ants are tiny and their paths are even smaller. Control and polish are never an issue for image and form, and it's nice to see that that rings true even for their older adventures. But let's touch on the centipede in the room. Yes, Ant Hill does feel like a mobile game. 
You collect stars based on how many points you accrue during each mission. The story is extremely limited. You're selecting levels from a node-based map, and these levels are all five to 10 minutes long. But whereas many mobile to switch ports kind of bum me out, this one gets my stamp of approval because the core gameplay loop is fun and addictive, and that quality is able to transcend platforms. Ant Hill is only possible on Switch. It would probably feel very forced and very cumbersome anywhere else. But as a $10 eShop game, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. There are approximately 40 levels of bug bashing, and you'll learn a lot about maintaining your Ant Hill along the way. In fact, that's one of my favorite parts about this game. It implicitly teaches you as you progress. Seven or so levels in, I learned I needed way more workers, way more of the basic ants, because they help you build your food stock and thereby build a bigger army. And this realization and subsequent score increase was super satisfying. There's a lot of little nuances like this here. Certain enemy types absolutely decimate certain units. Heavily guarded gems can be grabbed for extra points, but not extra food. The ability to split your ranks between many paths or focus them down one main path. You're constantly making decisions and constantly on your toes. There's next to no downtime in Ant Hill, and I'd imagine that's exactly what it's like being an ant. It's charming to worry about a ladybug. Worry about a ladybug. And exciting to seek out something shiny, even though it's a big risk to send your little workers on a journey that far across the map. This isn't a simulator by any stretch, but sometimes I feel like I've got six legs and some pincers because I have to utilize my ants in exactly the right way. It's these constraints that keep the game addictive. By limiting the scope, it increases the importance of the options at play, and the freeform nature of each map allows you to dictate how the battles will go. You don't really lose at Ant Hill per se, you more often just need to get a higher score. The opposition can take down your Ant Hill, but that happens quite rarely. Instead, you're replaying levels to earn more stars, which in turn earn you more upgrades, which in turn help you earn more stars. It's a nice little loop they've got going on and it never feels obnoxious. The score thresholds are tough but achievable, the balance feels spot on, and for those of you who are bug catching masterminds, there's an infinite mode that has you trying to survive wave after wave of bugs and bosses to set a new high score. I do wish that there was more variety to the backgrounds of each level. I understand having a limited set of units and some players will probably wish for more and more enemy types, but I think they could have added some extra pizzazz by just incorporating different looks for the maps maybe different seasons like fall and winter for a notable palette swap. At the end of the day, Ant Hill is a polished, unique, and addictive little game that I can fully recommend. It takes advantage of the touchscreen, which could be seen as a negative, but I'll list as a perk, and it's only $10. I was worried given its simple nature, its mobile origins, its playstyle limitations, but color me very impressed. Also, color me with six legs and those pincers I mentioned. We all know that sometimes it's hard to support game companies these days. There's a lot at play, but Image and Form is a studio I love supporting. They make fantastic games, they seem genuinely humble and passionate, and they fully committed to Switch, which you gotta love. Just consider what they've put out on the system thus far. Two dig games, platformers with upgrades and an economy of sorts. Heist Ultimate, a tactical turn-based shooter with loot. Quest, an RPG card battler builder with all sorts of combos. And now Ant Hill, an RTS tower defense with personal padding. To maintain fun and quality across that many vastly different games and genres is pretty astounding, and that team should be insanely proud of themselves. If you've already dug your way through the SteamWorld catalog, Ant Hill is an awesome look back to the earlier days of Image and Form. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to let me know what you think of the game in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the show. And until next time, everybody, have a fantastic weekend. Switch Force, out.